Guys, would you please get on your feet, put your stuff down, put your hands together for the amazing couple, Josh and Amanda Miller! Hey guys, I'm Amanda. And I'm Josh. <laughs> hey guys. Thank you. What we want to know is, who likes a good love story? <laughs> and who in here has the perfect relationship? Okay, not us either. But who likes the idea of happily ever after? Yeah. How about happily ever after with yourself? Hmm. So Amanda and I have known each other for 10 years. For five of those years, we've been married. And during that five years, we've started a company together, we've had a child, and we've moved 12 times. 12 times. You really want to put a marriage together, you, uh, you do that. So we spend about 98% of our time together, and it works fantastically. We love it. In fact, sometimes we work all day together on our business, then we have some family time, and then we stay up instead of going to bed because we just enjoy each other's company. We have a very, thank you, yes. Thank you. <laughs> it is a very fulfilling relationship. We love it. We have a lot of fun together. But it wasn't always that way. It took a bit of work. When Amanda and I first met each other, We'd flirt a lot. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And there was one day where we were particularly flirty. Whole oh, lot was, of fun. There was a lot of this. Oh, no, let me go. Oh, stop, stop. You know. And there was a lot of fun glances, a lot of flirting, a lot of holding hands. And I thought, you know, there could really be something here. There could be something to this relationship. And I got excited. Because throughout the rest of my dating experiences, it had been mostly been surface dating. There hadn't really been that deep level of connection that I was feeling with Amanda. And what I was looking for was someone to be my equal, someone to be there beside me, someone that I was excited to see every single day for the rest of my life. And with Amanda, I felt like I'd found that. So I was super excited. As I drove home to my apartment, I was replaying the day, replaying all that I had felt, all that I had experienced. And when I got home, I went and told my best friend, I, I said, you, listen to the day that I had. Listen to what I experienced. And he looked at me and said, but isn't she old? <laughs> Eight and a half years older. And isn't she divorced? Divorced twice. And I let those labels filter the experience that I had had. I let it crush my excitement. And I re-guessed everything that I had felt. And I ran and I hid from Amanda because I chose into those labels. So while Josh was having that experience, I was receiving some feedback of my own. I went to my family in a very similar manner and was really excited about my day with Josh. And what I was told was, but Amanda, he's two years older than your nephew. That's gross. <laughs> and feedback that wasn't directly given to me, but got back around to me, was that, oh, well, her other relationships, they didn't last. I'm not even going to bother to learn this guy's name. So the labels that I received were that I was inappropriate, and that my future was hopeless. And as I began to consider my options, I found myself at a crossroads to where I could buy into what everyone else was saying and what seemed to be the proof of my current outcome. And what that looked like for me was failure. And I began to wonder, well, I tried my hardest, but it wasn't good enough. Am I not good enough? Will I never be good enough? Have you ever wondered if your past was going to delegate what happened to the rest of your future? Yeah, it's a pretty yucky place to be in. That's where I was. You know, statistics weren't even on my side. Do you know how many people survive a third marriage? 
20%. 20% of people stay married. And that's not even the people who are happily married. That's just the people who don't get divorced again. How many of you like to go into something as big as marriage with an 80% fail rate? <laughs> yeah, it's a little intimidating. But luckily, I knew that I had another option. And in my other option, I didn't have any proof, except for what I felt inside of my heart. And what I felt to be true was that I had tried my hardest. I gave everything that I ever had, always. And that I'm a person of love. And that I deserve to find someone who would receive that love and return it to me. So that's the space that I held for myself. And that's where I chose to live in this experience. So for the next several months, Josh and I got to watch each other date other people. And it was really frustrating. <laughs> Who here has ever known exactly what you wanted, walked away from it, and then were really upset when you didn't have it? Yeah? Like watching the girl of your dreams dating other guys, knowing that she was holding their hand, knowing that she was kissing their face instead of yours. That was the price that I was paying for choosing into other people's labels for my life. But, lucky for us, the stars and the planets realigned once again, and we had another night. A night of heavy flirtatiousness and more wrestling, and this time, there was kissing. And it was good. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, I was thrilled when he contacted me and said, hey, what are you up to? Can we get together? We actually ended up having a long, deep conversation where we found out that we already loved each other. When we discovered that, we said, we should get married. <laughs> so we were pretty much engaged before we ever went on a date. And then, <laughs> you. you know, we're very efficient people. We were married four months later. Did we go on a date before we got married? Yeah. <laughs> we did. Yeah, hmm. sure. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> Moving on. So what we had discovered is that labels could do a lot of damage if we bought into them. So when we chose to marry each other, we made some big decisions together. One of them was is that we weren't going to accept those labels onto ourselves or onto our relationship anymore. The second decision that we made was that we were going to intentionally choose labels to put onto our relationship. One of the very important labels that we chose going into our marriage was that of same team. With same team, we knew that going into a marriage as two very strong, very opinionated, very fast-moving people, there were, there were going to be times we're going to fight. And instead of making the issue about whether I was right or whether Amanda was right, we chose to approach it looking at the problem, same team. An example of that, if I opened up the fridge and found out we had no orange juice, instead of me saying, why didn't you put orange juice on the shopping list? We don't have any. Well, you were at the grocery store, you walked right by it. Why didn't you grab it? We can choose same team, where we make a safe place, and I can say, oh, we don't have any orange juice. I totally forgot to grab some while I was at the grocery store. I didn't put it on the list, even though we talked about it. And so then, even if there's disappointment, oh, I really wanted orange juice. We can see what the problem is and solve it, rather than pitting each other against one another. And in a very real situation where we used this, was when I was very pregnant, and I had, I had a tough pregnancy, and whenever I craved something, it was bad. If I didn't have it, I actually got really, really sick. So when I wanted something, I had about the space of an hour where I could get it, but I really wasn't healthy enough to go grab it myself, so Josh was kind of my errand boy. And it was really late at night, and I was really having a bad craving. Josh had been ready to go to bed for a couple hours, but I begged him to go and buy me this thing. So I went to the store, and got the $3 box of cookies, I think is what it was. And when I got home, realized I didn't have my wallet. It was the third of the month, and we had just put our entire month's budget of cash in that wallet. And it was gone. Never got turned in again. Completely gone. A month worth of cash. Gone. 
And so what that could have looked like was this. Josh, how could you be so careless? We need that money. You know how sleepy I get at night. How could you have sent me out that late? But instead, we chose this. Oh, Josh, I can't imagine how I would feel if that were me. Don't worry about it. We'll figure out how to arrange money. Yeah, it does feel rough, but we can solve this. We can figure it out. And we did. And we do. Every time. Because we choose to be same team. And this works even if you feel like the problem is the other person. Okay, watch this. Okay, wait, stop. What you just said hurt my feelings, and now I'm angry at you. Okay, wait, stop. What you just said hurts my feelings, and now I'm angry at you. So it's about, it's about the anger. It's about the hurt feelings, and we both get to work towards that instead of me saying, oh, you did this to me. You go and get it. Right? <laughs> okay. The second label that we put is what we call my hero. Josh is my hero every day. This is a way that I get to show gratitude for him for the things that he does for me and for our family. An example of that would be on this trip, I forgot my pajamas, and I get really cold at night. Josh had his, and he gave them to me so that I could stay warm. So this trip, he's been my pajama hero. <laughs> and Amanda's very often my that is the most amazing meal hero. And thanks for grabbing a drink of water for me because I was parched hero. It gives us little opportunities to recognize the contributions that we get from one another and give that recognition and receive it as well. This is kind of our way of doing the greatness I see in you. Who has felt the power of that process? Yeah, wouldn't that be a great thing to experience every day? Who in here would love to be a hero every day? Yeah. <laughs> It's absolutely amazing, and it's built so much value in our life. It's something that can be done in an instant. And during this next exercise that we're going to do, uh, this exercise is called Speed Greatness. So we've seen with the greatness that I see in you, you can stand in front of e each other, make eye connection, spend five minutes recognizing the greatness within each other. But this can also be done immediately by intuition. So when, in just a moment, you're going to receive a sheet of labels that looks like this. And all you're going to need is a pen. You're not going to need anything else because we're going to have you stand up. So go ahead and set down uh, any books or papers that you have in your lap. And when you receive this sheet of labels, and we'll let you know when, when it's time to do this, we're going to have you stand up in silence, and it'll look like this. You'll come face to face with one of your, with one of your team members. And you're going to take just a second to connect. You don't need to take a long time. And you're going to choose one of the things that you see that's great about them, and write it down. It can be a single word or a short phrase. It doesn't need to be long. And while you're doing this, they are going to be doing the same thing for you. So once you have that word, you're going to take the label and place it on them. Appropriate area is the shoulders and arms. And at the same time, as Amanda said, they're going to be writing a label for you and giving you the gift of that label and you'll go through each member of your team, including your team leader. And then when you're done, I'll go ahead and continue into the surrounding teams if you have any labels left on your page. Now let me ask you this question. Out of everyone in your team, who do you think is going to give you the most impactful word? Who do you think is going to make the most difference for you? Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Yeah, yourself, right? You've had an opportunity to come to a lot of self-realizations, or maybe self-permission, to know some of the greatness that you already know about yourself. So I invite you to take one of these labels and give it to yourself. Give yourself that word or that phrase and put it on. Allow yourself to take that. And this exercise we're going to do in silence. We won't need to speak because we'll be able to just connect and use intuition to write down that label. We'll have 10 minutes for this exercise. Ready? Begin. Go ahead and stand up. Find a team member to connect with. Take a moment to look into their eyes and find that word or phrase. And as you do, write it down and give it to them.
you look at your words, pay attention to what it is that you're feeling, what it is that you're experiencing. Let's get some shares. What did you experience during this? Who would like to share what they're feeling? Yes. What is your name? Hey, Karina. Hey, Karina. Okay, let's try that again. Red, what is your name? Red Mike. And, <laughs> okay, what's your name? Karina. Hey, hey Karina. Karina. Hello again. Um, <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's fun to read the things that other people see in me that I hope to be. So the things I hope to be, they see already in me. Yes. It's very powerful. Thank you. I invite you to consider that those are things that you already are. Because there are things that people already see in you. So it's just a matter of accepting that for yourself. It's already there. Thank you. Who else? What else are we experiencing? Yes. Do we have I'm going to run it down here. Yeah. Josh is coming to be your mic hero. Okay. My name is Anna. Hey, hey Anna. Anna. And I feel gratitude for all of these words. It's just very uplifting and comforting to know that people see me, not just for. And I actually have an experience about soul to soul. I went home for my last Limitless, and I was trying to um, define what my strong looked like. And my strong is, um, I picked a word for each letter. So successful, trustworthy, righteous, ohana. And I got to N, and I didn't know what um, to use for that. And so I looked at my 11-year-old son, and I said, what describes me that's an N word? And we did the greatness I see in you. And he stared into my eyes, and he stared into my eyes, and he said, noble. And I said, noble. And then he looked away, and he said, mom, I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> and that was Aww. so powerful to me the, our souls spoke to each other and this is very powerful and when we look past the labels that we may have even put on somebody we will see their nobility and we will see words that we didn't even know existed yes thank you thank you that's beautiful <laughs> who else is experiencing that that you felt like you were really seen by the people, that these, these words are things that you feel are true to your heart. Yeah. How many of you are feeling great about this? Oh, yeah. 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 Was this exciting? It feels good, right? How would you like to experience this on a daily basis? What if this were our reality? What if everyone just walked around all day, we all had our packages of labels, and as we were in the grocery store, riding the bus, and walking around the neighborhood, we just received all of these beautiful words. What kind of a world would that be? Yeah, would you want to live there? Yeah. You know what, you created that world just now by choosing in. You did that. And this is the point of Limitless. That's why we come together like this. That's why we do the work that we do. So come join us. Come join us in creating this world. Come join us in the tribe. Join us in the inner circle. Because this is what we get to live every single day. And it's always this amazing. And when Thanks. you're surrounded by a group of like-minded people who are willing to choose in the same way you are, this type of miracle happens. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Josh and Amanda Miller.